Hey guys, before we start the video, just to let you know, only 10% of you are subscribed, so go down to the bottom and subscribe. Hey Ron, welcome back. This is the second episode of creating a Rust style inventory. In the last episode, we made a small little inventory type thing that can uh, stack items uh, up with one another and have unstackable items and we can actually make as many types of items as you want. So I'm just going to go show you that you can make as many as you want uh i'm just gonna make another one and we're gonna call this one stone uh while we're at this i'm also gonna make this one called wood and make this one called axe now i have i put some items onto itch.io um and you can use them um to but for all your icons and that kind of stuff um the link is actually in the description so go check those out okay so one thing that i want to do is um actually give these a sprite um and the way we're going to do that is we're going to give make some icons so i've really actually made the icons here we go so i've actually got them in a folder here um and i'm just going to go import them all i just made them earlier today uh in blender and what we're going to do uh, is we are going to set these all as sprite 2d and ui um, as the texture type uh, and we're just going to click apply uh, and there we go we've got all the uh, all of our sprites so we've got you know stones and all that kind of stuff um so there's two ways we could do do the sprites we could either give them actual uh, on the image uh that's one way to do it or we could give it in the inventory item uh data item data is probably a better way to do this uh we've actually already got an icon on there uh it just needs to set it so here we go let's set the wood item we'll we'll set it as the big one go stone now for the axe we're gonna give the axe uh sprite now let's actually make another uh item for this um new one first of all let's just rename this as axe and let's rename this as um wood uh now let's go into our project files and let's copy and paste this and we're going to rename this as stone we have our stone now let's just quickly edit it and this is as easy as it is whenever you copy you can simply just drag it um in the new item data because you've already made it it's as easy as that Cool, let's go ahead and drag this into some of our inventory slots. Yep, so as you can see, they're still red, they're still the same. Um, let's go ahead and change that. In our script here, um, in our inventory item script, we can actually do this really easily. Uh, let's go ahead and make a private, um, and then we're going to go sprite renderer. And we're just going to go renderer. We're just going to call it renderer for this. Uh, now, the sprite renderer is this... Oh, we're actually using image component, I forgot. Um, <laughs> so we're already using UI. So instead of sprite renderer, let's use image. So the image component is this part on the right. So it contains a sprite uh, and has a color and material. We're going to be actually resetting this color. So then it uses uh, the stone item uh, data sprite. So he here we go. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's call this um, image or uh, or icon um icon um data or icon renderer we're gonna call icon renderer and let's go uh on validate uh now this is a editor function so on, what on validate is is that whenever a value is changed it's going to call uh something that's on validate so um if we go okay so our icon renderer uh dot uh sprite is equal to item data dot icon uh, because it is an it is a sprite uh, variable um, and we're setting the sprite so here we go that's pretty much it uh, <laughs> for it now we can actually uh, make sure that we don't return a error here uh, by simply checking if icon renderer is equal equal to null uh, then we're actually going to get the icon renderer uh, we can just go game object here just to make sure that it does it if we go back to the edit the inspector now uh, it's going to load all the scripts. Uh, and here we go. So, as you can see, we're getting a few compilers. We can see where that, those are. Uh, 28. I oh, uh, we actually didn't set this. So, we can go icon renderer is equal to game object. I actually, I thought that looked a bit off uh, in the script. Just add the icon renderer is equal to. And here we go. As you can see, um, when we loaded it, it actually fixed all the icons for us. Uh, and this will happen whenever you change the inventory item. Um, yeah, so we can actually go ahead and 
change all the colors again back to white so they look normal and there we go we actually have a few um game objects inside the ball well, actually objects in there that we can use so here uh if we now stack them together boom now they have proper icons and we can see them uh much easier and understand them much easier so uh you might be wondering what else are we doing today well we're actually going to be doing a rarity uh, system so how do we do a rarity system? Now, it's actually surprisingly easy. So we have a inventory manager here. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and open up the script. The, remember, this this is the script that holds uh, all the data for our inventory. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, new header. Um, this is actually a good practice to do. Um, rarity and items. Uh, yeah, so this is actually a good practice to do because it helps um, un make you understand in the inspector what everything is. So if we just label this inventory and management, uh, so, we so all these all these variables in here are going to have a header above them uh, called inventory and management, and these ones down here is going to be rarity and items. We're going to make a public color list or a uh, array <laughs> color a uh, public color array and we're going to call this rarity yeah uh now inside our item we're also going to make a public int rarity so if you can already kind of put two and two together here you could probably figure out what this is so arrays go from uh zero to whatever number you have in them so zero one two three four um and then if we have a rarity that's an integer we can actually call what type of rarity we want so um obviously zero would be common one would be uncommon two would be rare three would be like legendary or epic four mythical so on so on go ahead that's pretty much all we need for uh rarity let's go ahead and move the current slot back up here cool so what we can do um is because our inventory items sorry our slots we have the slot script here. Now, the slot's the actual actual thing that's changing because th this is the thing that has the image component on it, right? That's the thing that we can change with the color for. So, because uh, so if we want like a common, we want it to be white. If it's green, maybe it's uncommon. Uh, things like that. So let's go ahead and open up our slot folder, slot script. Cool. So we've already got a um, access to the manager script. Uh, now, what we can do is that in an update, we can go if, uh, and here we're actually going to check whether or not the, uh, it's full. So, so, we can go manager, um, dot is full of ID, um, is equal, equal to false. Oh, actually true. So we're checking if there's an item in here um we can go if it's equal if it if it's full then we can change the rarity so we can go we're going to make a reference to the image public image but and because it's a ui element we need to reference up here uh to the ui an assembly that uh, public image and we're going to call this uh renderer or box box renderer i'm just going to call it renderer uh and in our start method we can go renderer dot uh is equal to get component of type image same thing as what we did before um so now what we can do is we can go renderer dot color is equal to uh our color of our item inside so we can go is equal to uh get child or actually transform dot get child of zero so our first child in the thing we should only have one uh dot get component or item inventory item sorry dot item dot so we've actually named this our uh, um so we've got this file here which is, has our rarity in it now on our inventory item we have item data so we can go uh, dot item data uh, dot rarity now how do we change make this so this is an integer how do we change it into uh essentially what we want our rarity to be our color so we can actually go put these in square brackets and then call at the at the front of it manager dot rarity and there we go and put that in there because in our inventory manager 
we have color for rarity. Um, we can actually call this rarity colors to, to avoid confusion. Save that. Rarity colors. And there we go. So if we go back into Unity and uh, we let it load, you can see that our manager, we have colors. So here we go. Let's make, uh, let's say three. We'll go um, uncommon. So we'll common, which will be white uh, with an alpha of 155. I think that's probably good. Uh, element 1, which is our uh, uncommon, we're going to make it a tint of green uh, with a 155 as well. Uh, and then here, which is our rare, we're going to make it a nice blue uh, with a alpha of 155. And there we go, now we have a few um, rarity colours. Do you want to change those a bit? I think that's good that looks kind of nice yes okay now how do we actually make it so then they use it well in our item data we can assign it so here we go item data axe uh the axe actually doesn't yeah has a uh, rarity here uh so the axe will have one because it's uncommon or actually we'll go two to make it rare uh stone will make it uncommon and wood will make it very common so it's zero so let's go ahead and click play and let's see what happens there we go, and as you can see, they've all changed. Uh, but as you can see, if if we move the, if we start moving them about, they're actually keeping their colors, which we do not want. This is very very not good. Uh, now, how do we fix this? Also, we get these uh, errors: transform child out of bounds. That's because it's um, trying to check when there's something not in there. So let's go ahead. Uh, we can go uh, or if oh actually um and manager or actually if we go else in our inventory manager we can set a public color and we're going to call this default slot color back in our slot script we can go render dot color let's just copy this is equal to manager dot default slot color oh color list did i make it a list oh i did we're an array cool so now if we go to our inventory canvas well, manager, sorry. Uh, and we set our default slot color. We can actually set this to whatever we want. And we're going to set it to 155 as well. Uh, and, uh, we're going to make it a nice gray. So here we go. Let's check. Boom. And now, as you can see, they are changing. But we're getting a really annoying error, um, which is very odd. Um... We need to check that out. So it's it's trying to check when there's nothing in there. So instead of going manage dot is full, we can go uh, transform dot child count is uh, more than zero. I'm gonna check if it's more than zero. We shouldn't get any errors, and we can still stack them in all that. Uh, it still keeps its rarity. Uh, we still got our axes which are blue. Um, you could actually tint these down quite a lot because they're very, very intense, aren't they? There we go, that, that looks a bit better. The second part of the video is crafting. Uh, th this is why we, this is why I gave you stone and wood. At the beginning, we're gonna make, we're gonna make axes. And that's why we had the add item, uh, in the first video. Also, just so you can add items, uh, whenever you want, if, if you just stopped at the first video. So let's go ahead and actually remove everything from our inventory. And in our uh, inventory manager, we're just going to double check that the add item is working. So we're going to uh, actually wait. We have to we have to input a number of things. Let's let's do this. Um, okay, let's let's just quickly do um, a basic game objects. We're just going to test something out here. Uh, we're going to call it item item to add um and a public int amount to add this is just a debug so uh we're gonna go add item item to add uh amount to add cool now let's assign these quickly now let's test it out so we're gonna add wood and we're gonna add 10 of it it adds does it add 10 and one no it just adds one Okay, that's very nice. Uh, did I... Have we done this correct? Ah, it returns. 
Right. Let's see. And it adds way too many because it, inv uh, it uh, infinitely does it. So the way we can actually get rid of this is instead of uh, for looping through the amount now, uh, we can for loop through the amount when we actually add them. Uh, and we still we will still return out of this afterwards. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna do crafting now. Uh, this is gonna require a bit more. Uh, and so inside items, we're actually gonna create another folder, and we're gonna call this uh, crafting data. Uh, and you guessed it, this is gonna hold all the data for crafting items. Uh, so we're gonna set up something pretty much identical to what we did with our um, item scripts. So let's go ahead, let's make a C sharp script, and we're gonna call this crafting. Uh, we're just gonna call it craft. So we have item and craft. Uh, we're gonna delete everything, well, our whole class, and we're gonna do scriptable object. Um, here we go. Remove Unity Engine, uh, and let's let's make some things. Craft, easy. Order, and we're gonna set it to one because we have our item as our number zero order. Uh, here we go. So let's make a public. Uh, and this this time we're gonna use ints because these this is the IDs. Um, public int ID, IDs actually. Public int because we're gonna do public int array. So I'm gonna do a public int array, uh, and we're gonna also do a uh, IDs amounts uh, and what the ids amounts is going to be is if you can imagine the ids is the actual ids that we're going to be using so uh zero be wood and one be stone uh ids or stones two sorry <laughs> so ids uh zero is wood two is stone so we'd have zero and two and then ids amounts would have one wood and one stone uh or two wood and one stone cool that is pretty much everything we need for that and the way we're going to set up the crafting is we're going to have another c sharp script called crafting button now crafting button is going to contain a public craft called recipe boom uh okay <laughs> now this is where it's going to get a tad bit complicated we're going to make a void called craft item this has to be public because the craft button is going to be what crafts it. And here, uh, we're going to be uh, collecting info whether or not item can be crafted. So here we're actually going to just basically figure out how many, uh, if we can craft them. So we're actually going to require a few sets of items. So we're going to go uh, an int called IDs an int list or an array called ids and then int and then an int array called ids same thing as up there so now in the crafting button uh we can make a public manager we're going to get a reference of our manager uh, inventory manager in our start method we're going to go uh manager is equal to game object dot get that find game object with tag manager dot get component and here we're going to go inventory manager because we're getting the inventory manager component. Um, and now we're going to make another void, a public void actually, uh, void craft item. And here we're just going to go manager dot craft item or uh, cra yeah craft item. Uh, and here we can give it a few things. So we can go recipe dot ids and recipe dot ids amounts. Cool, so now we've given the, our inventory manager the info that it needs, and now we need to check all our slots to see, uh, you know, how many, <laughs> how many of each we have. Let's make a for loop, and we're going to for loop through all our slots, slots uh, dot count, um, and here uh, we're going to check whether or not they have the IDs that we have. So we can go if uh, slot of i dot get child zero oh actually we can go here if um is full of i is equal equal to true uh then we can continue so we can go if uh slots dot get child zero dot get component of type inventory item dot id inventory item 
Uh, and here we're going to get the item data dot item data uh, dot ID is equal equal to our IDs of uh, currently it's zero. Uh, <laughs> but if we want to um, put this in a for loop, because uh, we're going to check through all our IDs. We're going to check if we have all our IDs. So here we go. Let's just put this in another for loop. Slap this one on here. Uh, and let's change the i's in this to x and let's go ahead and uh loop through our ids uh dot length so we've looped through all of these we have for loop through the number of ids and we're looping through the slots and we're finding whether or not the slots are, are full uh and then we're checking whether or not the id is equal to it if it is um we can actually remove the amount uh <laughs> so what we could also do is and the uh slot all of this copy and paste uh and, but instead of ids actually we don't even need item data uh and and slots uh dot amount uh is actually more than or equal uh to the ids amounts of x as well so we're checking whether or not they have the amount and the required amount yep cool uh so let's go ahead and remove them and then we can add the item so here we go uh instead of add item uh we're gonna make a bool list and this is going to be called collected uh is equal to a new bool array i uh, am we're going to be making it the length of ids and we can go collected dot actually collected of uh i or x sorry um is equal to true instead easy <laughs> um and we can also actually uh remove the items inside or at least uh store it so let's actually remove it instead uh makes it a bit easier uh so what we can do is gather this data boom um but instead of the id's dot amount we just go dot amount minus equals to id's amounts of x boom uh, yeah, so this is this is gonna remove it, um, and this is gonna remove all of them. So we're actually checking through all the IDs. Uh, this sh honestly should be it. So all we have to do now is for loop through the collected. So uh, we, this could stay I, uh, and let's uh, loop this if it's less than collected dot length. that group yeah i have okay now we can go if collected of i is equal to false then we're gonna return else so this is that the actually at the end of the for loop then we add item so what item do we add now in the craft we're gonna make public uh game object and it's gonna be outcome and then we can go public uh, int uh, outcome amount. Cool. So now in our inventory manager, we can go add item. And up here, actually, we could go game object item or uh, outcome. And a int called outcome amount. Amazing. Uh, now in here we could also give it a recipe dot uh, outcome not outcome amount and recipe dot outcome amount cool so now we're giving it some extra data to use to add the item on here we can add the outcome uh, and the outcome amount so now we're adding the outcome and the outcome amount 
Uh, but instead of the alchemical mount up here, we're actually going to remove this because this doesn't actually work well properly. Uh, and, and instead, we're actually going to for loop uh, again inside here, and we're going to get give it here, give it here, boom, boom, and we're going to make it less than the outcome amount. And instead of in here, we're going to actually remove that. So just it adds the outcome uh, for outcome amount of amount of times. Um, that was is short, but kind of complicated. Uh, all of this. <laughs> so I hope you guys stuck along, because that was that was quite complicated. Uh, and then that's the end of our craft item area. So hopefully this works. I think it should. We probably have an error. Yes, we do. Uh, add item takes two arguments. Uh, I don't where. Thirty-five. Oh right, we have to change it. Uh, list of transform. Okay, uh, eighty-one. Slots of oh sorry, uh, slots of I. And slots of I. Slots of I. Boom, and we're good. Now let's make a little bit of a um, let's let's make some crafting items. So here we go, prefabs inventory items, uh, crafting data, and let's create uh, create a craft. And this is going to be called axe. Um, now we're going to <laughs> yeah we shouldn't have done capitals uh, IDs. We're going to be using uh, two IDs. Uh, There's going to be uh, zero, and it's going to be two. If I remember correctly. Yeah, X is ID 1, Stone is ID 2, Crafting Data X, we're going to be using 0 and 2, Outcome is going to be the X, and Outcome Amount is going to be 1. Okay, so that's our data. Um, now we could also go uh, Folder and Crafting Buttons. Okay, so let's, let's make a button inside our canvas. Inside our canvas, we're going to go out of our inventory. Or actually, we can um, go inside our inventory, but it's just different. Let's go UI and make a panel. Uh, and this is just going to hold our crafting buttons. You obviously have as many of these as you want. I'm only going to have a few. Um, I, you can make some off. I'm going to make probably some off camera. Um, so then next, if we do do a next episode, then we can uh, continue on. Crafting. I know. Oh, here we go. Make a vertical uh, layout group. And let's make a UI. And this one's going to be button. And first of all, let's actually fix all this uh, padding. So the left padding, we're going to give it, you know, 25 looks good. Um, from the top pattern, we've got, got to give it a 5. Um, we can change all these sprites, set to none. Uh, and text, we're just going to call this axe for now. Uh, let's go ahead and call this axe. And let's drag it in as a prefab. So in our prefab, we can open this up and give it the crafting button script. So the crafting button script is going to hold the craft recipe. So we're going to give it the axe recipe that we just made. Manager, it gives it itself. But let's uh, add an on click event, drag in a button, the crafter button, function, crafting button, craft item. Cool, so now uh, we can actually click on this. I actually just disabled that. <laughs> um, we can change the color of it as well. Uh, if we wanted to change the rarity, it's the same practice. I'm going to give it a blue one. Um, let's go ahead and click it. Nothing should happen because, uh, yeah, we have no items. But what what about if we go add some items? Items. Items. Let's add s wood to our first slot. Or actually, we'll go 10 slot just to test it. Uh, we'll, we'll make the amount. We'll, we'll give ourselves 50 wood. 
Uh, and uh, we'll also give ourselves stone, and we're gonna give ourselves a uh, hundred stone. Or actually, no, we can't. We'll give ourselves sixty-six stone. Um, boom. Let's click play. And let's make an axe. Index was outside bounds of the array. So here we go. We've uh, made a compile error. Good job. Um, cool. Let's check. Let's check where this was. Craft item. It does annoy me that it doesn't uh, actually tell you whereabouts. At uh, assets, uh, scripts, inventory, inventory manager, CS81. So it's on the 80, 81th line on the inventory manager. It's here. Index with outside of bounds of the array. That means that it's one of these. Oh, we haven't. Look, ideas, amounts, is nothing. <laughs> let's go ahead and change that. Uh, let's make it use uh, one wood. Oh, actually, two wood and one stone. That makes sense for an axe. Here we go. Let's click. Let's click craft, and as you can see, it actually crafts it. And it removes... It removes it. That is really, really cool. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that's actually it for today's episode. That's pretty much it. Tomorrow, we're actually going to be fixing a few issues. Uh, because if we, if we actually spread out all our, uh, stuff... It's actually not gonna work. It's uh yeah, uh that's that that's gonna take me a while to figure out though. Um so yeah, I'll show you what I mean. So if we copy this, uh, paste it here. Um, oh, paste as child. What? Yeah, we paste this as the child, and then we give this like yeah, that's one amount, uh, and that as you know uh. Two. We need. Oh, actually, stone's probably not the best one to do this with. But if, but it, but if we were to spread this out, it would actually not work. Um, that is for tomorrow's episode or another episode. Probably not tomorrow. Um. Yeah. So if we go with one, it's it's not going to work that well because if we if we click, boom. That stays the same. That 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 doesn't. It's only gonna take from that one. Um. Now it's not even giving us axes. Uh, and but it's still taking from that. So we should probably just remove that and do that afterwards. Um. You know what? We can actually do that now. So instead of doing that here, uh, we can remove that. But instead, uh, we could go transform, actually, uh, transform, uh, array, slots, okay, okay, see, everyone, so if you, if you click play now, and I have a few extra ones, as you can see, if we were to click this, nothing happens to that one. And actually, it's going to stop after a while, and if we, because we don't have enough stone, but if we keep clicking the button, it's going to remove it away. How do we fix that? Well, we're going to go make a transform array inside our script, and this is going to be called collected slots. It's uh, equal to a new transform uh, array, and this is going to be called ID, is going to be IDs.length. Same length as it. Now, whenever we find it, instead of doing this, we're actually going to set collected slots uh, equal of uh, x uh, is equal to slots of i dot get child. We're actually going to set uh, dot get child. Oh my god, sorry. Dot game object. Oh, actually dot yeah. Just get get the child. <laughs> okay. Um. Now, when we're Collecting all of these, we can then follow through again our collected slots dot length. And here we're actually gonna go uh slots <laughs> collect collected slots uh dot get component inventory item and this is gonna be dot of i uh dot amount minus equal to the ID's amount of uh i. I'm gonna for loop through amount of i because that's the same. Cool. So here we go. 
if we click play now, and we click X, it's gonna go up to three, and it's actually not gonna take anything else, uh, because it can't. Uh, simple as that. Easy. Uh, now, if you're wondering why that didn't, that actually uh, just merged incorrectly, it's because it's going into negatives. That's at zero. That should actually be destroyed. Um, <laughs> and that one should be at zero as well. Yes, it is. So that is something that we need to fix. That if they're at zero, they need to be destroyed. Uh, that is actually very easy to do. Uh, we could go if uh, if get component. Uh, get child, sorry, of transform dot get child of zero. Actually, we can check if child count is more than zero. We already have a function for that. The get child of zero um, dot get component inventory item dot amount is less than or equal to zero. Yeah, we're, they we're actually just going to destroy the slot. Okay, so let, let's see what happens. So, uh, that should work. Let's click play. And let's do this. And as you can see, it's <laughs> deleting the slots. That's not good. I wasn't destroy. What uh, was it going to? We're going to do that. Copy. We're going to destroy the dot game object. There we go. Now we're destroying the child. And I think that's it for today's episode, guys. We've um, learned how to make a crafting system, uh, rarity colors, and all sorts of that goodness. Boom, there we go, and it removes it. How great is that? Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Um, if you did, please subscribe. It takes me a long time to make these. Um, but anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.